There appears to be ethnic cleansing that's going on. No one has really given a flying fig about what on earth is happening inside Kachin State. They really believe that they're going to end up being crushed and wiped out unless they fight. We saw up close and personal what was happening with the Rohingya. The world's attention has been so much focused on the Rohingya, they haven't noticed what's happening elsewhere in the same country. The Myanmar military and the Myanmar authorities have become almost emboldened by what's happened and how much they've got away with that they're now turning their attention and their guns onto another ethnic group, this time in the north. And so we decided it would be a good idea to try and check that out find out what was going on. The Burmese military has, uh, has sort of upped its, its, uh, its bombing campaign in the Kachin state. There appears to be this ethnic cleansing that's going on in a different part of the same country. Though it's not on the same levels in Kachin, but uh, the, the indications are, or the patterns are very similar. The Kachin are a very strong rebel group with their own hierarchy and their own army. They present a quite formidable opposition to the Myanmar authorities. It's like a separate state within a state. They really believe that they're going to end up being crushed and wiped out unless they fight. I mean, to be honest, I didn't know much about Kachin or the Kachin people before I started covering what was happening in Myanmar. Most people don't know anything about the Kachin people. They had lived in relative peace for centuries in the northern part of Myanmar. They've been fighting this war for literally decades. No one has really given a flying fig about what on earth is going on inside Kachin State. It's not been reported, no journalists allowed. The Burmese uh, government does not allow journalists to go up north to the Kachin area. We decided we had to tell the story the next step was to reach this place. I don't want to go into too much detail about how we got in, because this will expose the people who helped us. But we were helped by a network of people who managed to get us inside the area known as Kachin State. Ka Kachin? Kachin? Yeah, yeah we're, in, we're in Kachin. We didn't know what to expect. We knew there was fighting going on. We didn't know the lay of the land. How far is the fighting? How close has the Burmese military come to? It is a very difficult place to access, that is for sure. Who 
moving around is quite difficult because the Burmese military has advanced certain places, they have certain places they have gone back. When Britain gave Myanmar their independence in the 1940s, the Kachin people were promised their independence, they were promised self-determination, promised equality, given all sorts of promises which never ever happened. The Myanmar military is actually bombing these people. They're bombing civilian areas. This bombing campaign has become quite severe. There's been thousands of people who have been displaced. Bombing from the air. Villages or near villages trying to force people to move. And they have moved in their tens of thousands. Terrified people running, being carried across rivers on the backs of elephants just to get to safety, fled in terror. And some of the people that we spoke to had moved or been forced to move multiple times. Many of the families here have fled attacks more than once, jumping from camp to camp to try and find safety. They live right on top of each other, no privacy, very little facilities, very little altogether. No aid agencies are able to get there, blocked by the Myanmar authorities. We spoke to one woman who'd moved, I think she said seven times. She spoke about the Myanmar military bombing so close. They were terrified. They just ran and they camped by rivers. They even crossed the border into China and then were sent back by the Chinese. They're trapped in that northern part of Myanmar by the Chinese and the Indian borders. So they're really sitting, sitting ducks there. It's an incredibly beautiful country, particularly that part, because it's very mountainous. It's very wild. There's lots of jungle. It's quite hard. But I think one of the reasons why the Kachin have managed to keep hold of this territory is that it's like this. Mountainous, difficult, not much of an infrastructure. The Kachin are a mostly Christian group. I noticed a lot of them had red bandanas with religious writings on the back of their scarves urging them to go on, and many of them appeared to have a very strong faith and belief that God was on their side. It's all jungle lands, all hilly, all mountainous. This trip was pretty unusual on a number of levels, not least because we went in as a very small unit and Neville and I were shooting all our own footage. A lot of the times, in very, very challenging conditions. The humidity was something off the scale of anything um, I've ever experienced. Oh, God, everything's just a little bit sweaty. Bloody hot, and it's really sweaty. These guys, there's not a drop of sweat on them. No, it's, it's very humid. I mean, poor old Neville. Is there a problem? The camera was absolutely soaked. Yeah, it doesn't hold well. It's not. It's not something you want on such a on such a journey. What are you going to do then? I think we'll just keep it shut down for the moment and just hope it revives. And that in itself was a challenge, because we had to cope with the physical exertion of hiking with these guys who were very used to the humidity and the conditions. And then on top of that, the cameras struggling to cope. 
there was always a lot of uh, uh, movement of the Kachin Independent Army. They're regularly patrolling. We were continuously moving around with them and were trekking for almost seven, eight hours a day. And they, they did that at night as well. <laughs> Can't see a thing. We'd be following the patrol and wondering where on earth they were going, and they knew exactly where they were going. They obviously have been doing that on a very, very regular basis. So whilst we were slipping and sliding and trying to keep up with them, they were moving um, really stealthily. I worried about falling. <laughs> I never climb a mountain in the night. You're looking through the night vision and you can see things mm. sort of clearly. You still can't really see where you're walking or how yeah. you're stepping, and we spend most of the time falling. They were using just their eyes, and I suppose your eyes get accustomed, but when you're switching between the night vision and your normal eyes, it's like going from dark to bright the whole time, and your eyes can't adjust. Show off. They would set up their camps within half an hour. They had everything worked out, and they would set up a kitchen, cook their food, stay the night there. We stayed the night with them in the jungle. Next morning, they were ready to move to another place. A lot of these outposts, they're literally within a few hundred metres of a Myanmar or a Burmese outpost. They're only about 800 metres away, positioned right on the top. And that's where they mount some of these attacks. The soldiers from either side are eyeballing themselves a few hundred metres across different hilltops. They feel they're constantly in their sights. Two different armies trying to keep quite a high profile without being too provocative. They don't want to draw fire because men on the ground with guns cannot match a military that's got jets and helicopters and lots of artillery. The problem is, the Myanmar government appears to have an agenda, and they want to get back control of the Kachin area. And at the moment, the Kachin army is standing in their way. Is it a battle they can win? I think it's a battle they think they can't afford to lose and they're prepared to do absolutely everything to defend their territory, because their territory is all they've got. It's been pretty difficult to get attention on this particular issue. Because no one's interested. It's just another atrocity that's going on in a little known part of the world that no one really cares about. Most of the public, I don't think, know about it. The problem is the politicians do know, and they're still not doing anything about it.